Hi everyone, welcome to another SkySiv tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at structural 3D and how you can model and design a scaffolding structure in the software. So today we're going to be using the AISC 360 design standard, uh, but you can just as easily use this software for your European standards or your Australian standards uh, to perform these sorts of uh, design checks um, and, and these sort of uh, scaffold style design or these um, temporary structures. Uh, so we're going to start from scratch, just building our model. Uh, we'll take you through a few tips and tricks that you can use to quickly and easily build these types of structures. And then we're going to go on to designing and performing a design check, checking the utility ratios of these uh, scaffold start type structures. So I'll start off um, by using the pen tool. I find the pen tool is a really quick and easy way to start modeling the outline of your structure. So I can just click here, or drop a node, and then I can just pop sort of like eight feet. So I can just type in eight and it will automatically build my element that long. And then, so I'll do the same here, eight. And then I can also make the most of the adjacent nodes, so it picks up adjacent nodes. Also works in 3D too, so um, I can sort of build the outline in the, in the uh, Z direction as well. I'll go four feet across. Yeah, just quickly and easily picks up adjacent nodes, which is makes life a lot easier. So we've got sort of the basic outline of one of our bays. And then what I'll do is I'll hold, uh, sorry, I will actually change these elements to being a second section ID. So we're going to have our columns different to our beams. So section, we'll introduce, sorry, members. Make this section ID two. And you can see they've now turned green. We'll also add in some um, bracing here. Yeah, sort of got like an outline of our of our members there. Um, now, when we're modeling a, a scaffold structure, usually the member ends are connected by pin connections. So the couplers at these joints are generally pin connections. So we might want to make that change now. So I'm just going to control A just to select my entire model. And I'll just go to members. And you can see it's multi-editing. So it's editing all those members at once. And I'm just going to set them by default, they're fixed, but I'm just going to set that as being truss. So now they're all pinned, and you can see that there's little dots just to represent that they are now pin connections. Um, and I'll also add a plate to the top here, so I'm just going to highlight that, the top nodes. I can use the right-click function, add plate, so it's automatically going to add that plate in there for me. And yeah, pretty happy with sort of the, the general outline of my um, first bay. We then also want to specify cross sections because right now they're, they're not defined. So the, the columns in the green and the um, black elements or the beams or even the bracing members, um, they haven't been defined yet. So let's go through and actually define the, um, the section properties of those members. So we can go to, we can just click the section ID there and then go Builder, and basically search the database, it's probably the easiest way, or I can browse through American, AIC, go through my round HSS, so I can see the full library. Uh, it's pretty typical, um, you'll get sort of, uh, maybe like a HSS 1.9, something like this, 0.12, for sort of the bracing and beams, and then maybe the vertical horizontal members um, or the columns actually, we'll, we'll do yep. in the builder 1.88. This one, so you can kind of specify different types of um, cross sections uh, based on the different parts of the model and what they're doing. So, actually, I'll, I'll just make a change here. So, the I've got the bracing element right as the 1.9 by. 0.2, but I want to actually make the beams and the columns the same section. So I'm just going to go back and change them members, mm -hmm. those members to being section two. So a bit hard to tell with the plate there, but if I click the member, I can see that the beams and the columns are green, um, and the bracing elements are the 1.9 by 0 0.12. 
Another way to confirm this, and it's also always a good idea just to go into the renderer, just to see the structure in 3D, just to make sure um, what I've built has the correct dimensions. It'll help you identify if there's any unit issues, like maybe you entered the units in the incorrect, uh, you know, entered them as inches when they should be millimeters or something like that. Uh, just a quick and easy way to, to determine if there's any kind of dimension issues um, with your model. So we've got the sort of outline of our structure built. Um, we can uh, start to apply some loads. And the reason we're going to apply some of the loads now is just because we want to copy and paste this into the rest of the frame. So I'll apply some live loads now. Um, and I'm going to do that under area loads. And I've just got this simple guide. I mean, it's quite common to find these um, articles just on how to load your scaffolding structure. And we'll go for a medium duty, um, which is a 50 pound per square foot uh, live load that we want to add to our structure. So what I'll do is highlight the top of the nodes, so those four nodes, and double click there. They'll just import the nodes that I've selected. And we had, uh, so we're going for like a 50 pounds per square foot. So actually one thing I will do is change my unit system. So here you can see I'm using feet, kip, KSI. Let's just change the forces to pounds. You can also use this to change to the metric system, but for now we'll stick in st stick into the imperial system. So let's go back. Area loads. <laughs> Double click. So we're still in KSF. And what I can actually do here is add in minus 50, which is pounds per square foot, and then just divide it by a thousand. So you can put in formula and equation into these inputs and they will automatically calculate for you. So I'm just going to do 50 divided by 1000 to get that into KSF. And I'll add this as a live load. You can see that pressure has been applied to that bay. Um, and if I go here, I can click equivalent area loads and you can see how that pressure is being distributed to the members. It's a one way load that's being distributed outwards. We just want to change that to being the opposite direction, so I'm going to go from node 2 to 5. I'll just change the direction in which it's loaded. And the really uh, convenient feature that I can use is by clicking that load, I can see the entire pressure. So I've, I've got a 1600 pound total force um, that is being divided, uh, being split between these two members. And I can do a quick check. It's always a good idea to do quick checks along the way. So I've got 8 foot by 4 foot, so 8 by 4. 50 pounds sounds right 1600 pounds total force so that looks correct I'm happy with the um, the loading that's being applied there so once I've got that I can start to replicate or duplicate or copy my member across so I'm just gonna my structure across I'm just gonna control a and control C just to select the entire model and it's using this as my reference node you can see that highlighted that node so that's just gonna be where I paste from so if I click node 4 and then paste from there, you can see that that's now pasting in the correct way that I want it to. Uh, and then I can also then do a control A, control C again. And actually before I do that, let's add a couple of supports here. So typically <coughs> the structure will have some vertical roller supports here just to attach it to the building. So I'm just going to add those. I'll go supports, double click, and we can just select this vertical roller. And the reason I'm doing that is just so when I copy and paste, they're going to come along with it. And so paste there, paste there. So you can sort of see how easy the, the copy and paste function is to uh, replicate parts of my model and just build them up in a really quick and easy way. Uh, finally, we want to add some supports, obviously, at the base. So I'm just going to select those nodes, support, double click to import those nodes, and just do pin support. That's fine. So I've got some area loads. Uh, I didn't select those areas uh, when I was copying and pasting, so that was a, a little mistake on my end, but uh, I can copy this. Yeah, it might not work actually. I might, I might have to just re add uh, those area loads there. So. Basically, when I was copying and pasting my substructure, I should have included the loads um, to copy them across. But with this area load function, it's actually really quite easy to add them. So we can just highlight those nodes. Want a new one? Highlight those nodes. 
fit. So we're just going to do the edge nodes, corner nodes. So when we're applying an area load, we did these ones individually, but we can also just add them all in one go. So to do that, uh, I can just click the corner nodes of the area in which I want to apply the area load to. And it'll be the same. Minus 50,000. Load. Um, 13 to 25, let's give that a shot. Yeah, that looks right. And you can see that that's another way you, you can add them. So here we've got the larger tributary area because it's collecting both sides. Here that you can't quite see, but there's two 200 pound force. So you can see it's done the exact same math um, and I've just done it in one easy step at the end. We might add some um, lateral load just I'll just do a point load here at node 45 so I can just right click that node at point load and we'll do that in the X maybe say a 200 pound force we'll call that wind load and then finally we'll turn on the self weight So then we'll add some load combinations. So I'm going to import from ASCE 716, uh, just given I'm using the American code, and specify the live load as live, the wind load as wind, and then that's going to apply all the different factors uh, via these load combinations. So just make sure I'm testing all the different combinations as per the ASCE uh, 710, uh, 716 and 722. Um, of course, it supports Canadian, Australian, European standards as well, so you can import the load combinations as you need uh, from your rel uh, relevant regions. So I'm pretty happy with my model. Uh, I've added all the geometry. I can do another quick check that it's built correctly in the renderer. It's pretty good. There's quite some, there's some quite slender elements, so I'll probably perform a buckling analysis at the same time um, and run the solver. So that's going to perform a buckling analysis for the different load combinations as well. It's also going to compile the results into an envelope result too, so I get uh, some envelope results too. Uh, so it does look like there is some buckling occurring in the model, um, so it's just getting me to review those. I can check the summary report. This is a really handy uh, quick check where you can just check um, things like the material yield. You can see there is, a, there is buckling. You can see which load combinations are governing. Um, so you just get an idea of, of what's happening in the structure. We'll check all the different load combinations as well as the envelope results and, and just give you a sort of snapshot of what your model's doing. Uh, so there's some buckling, but let's, let's proceed with the design just to show how the integrated um, scaffolding design module works. So I'll just go design, quick design. So this will load the library of calculators. And if I just search scaffolding, keyword scaffolding, spell scaffolding correctly um, and you can see I've got the Australian New Zealand standard the British European code and the American standard uh, as well so I'll just select the American standard it will import all my section properties material properties all the forces on the members and then run an automatic design check uh, on all the different elements and I'm happy to see that uh, all my elements or all my members are passing um, you can sort of look out for some governing utility ratio. So maybe we want to look at this, this element, um, which is the governing element. It's got about 72% util utilization. And you can check the report. So all of our um, quick design and all of our other design modules include a detailed design report as well. So you can see exactly what checks are being performed. You can cross-reference the, um, the different the relevant references from the actual code as well and just see the the utility ratios and how they're being calculated so uh, yeah just that open transparency so you can double check the work uh, or just see how the design check is being performed i get a summary as well uh, so i can download that pdf um, you can also see the inputs that have come in so the, all the, obviously the, the member length um, the section properties and of course the forces here that have taken from the governing or the envelope results. So it's giving you the worst case um, design. Then finally I can run a summary design report. So this might be uh, the last piece I need for my documentation. Uh, maybe I want to include this report with my final design. Um, it's just a very simple 
clean report uh, that you can download as a PDF. Um, yeah, just with the, all the input and all the output result summary. So that's pretty much it. That's how easy it is to perform a design check on a scaffolding structure using SkySiv Structural 3D. Hope to see you on the platform. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out at support at skysiv.com. Thank you.